Hello, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. This show is an unrehearsed look into my creative process. I'm Stuart. I'm a 3D artist, illustrator, and your pal, and I'm excited to have you back. Episode 235. This episode is going to be a little bit of a quick tip. Um, I've sort of developed this style you're, you're looking at here. Um, it's very graphic. It's kind of flat, um, but it's not sketch in tune. It's similar to an effect you might get using sketch in tune. Um, it has a really nice kind of noisy quality, um, almost has sort of like a vector feel, but then of course it has the bonus of being able to, uh, you know, rotate around it and all the, all the goodness that 3D brings. And uh, it renders quite quickly too. It doesn't use GI or anything fancy like that. So let's jump in and I'll quickly show you how to create this sort of look. So I've got a fresh scene set up. Let's quickly just get some geometry in there and have something to render on. And I'm going to just copy these and hold shift and sort of quantize things. That's, that's weird. All right, cool. There we go. Just going to sort of line these up here. Working in, you know, 200 centimeter increments, which makes things very easy. And I'm just holding control. I'm on a PC now. I'm just hitting control and dragging things. And that makes a copy of them. And while I'm holding shift, um, it's easy to lock things into this grid where everything is, you know, consistently lined up. Looks great. Let's add a sphere, which is nice when you're, when you're demoing like a lighting setup to have some rounded shapes in there with the uh, hard edged ones. So. What I'm also going to do is quickly add an interactive render region so we can just, you know, make all these little tweaks and adjustments on the fly. And that's exactly what I'm working on. This little tiny arrow here allows me to turn the settings way up. We've got a full quality preview here. And the first thing I'm going to do is, is add a light. Whoops, I'm going to add actually an area light instead. And I'm going to pull this back into position. Now, the position of this light is going to obviously affect the way the highlights read on these objects. So to get the right look, you may need to kind of tweak the placement of this guy here. And then here's, here's what I think one of the interesting things. This is a, this is something I didn't know you could do um, until yeah, maybe in the last year or so. I'm going to make a new material. I'm going to turn off everything except for the alpha channel. And I'm going to load a noise texture in there. What I'm going to do is in this low clip, I'm going to, um, make this the low and the high clip actually here almost touching one another. So super high contrast on the noise. I'm just going to go ahead and add that to the light. You can see automatically it, it, it'll mask out where the uh, light is coming from. I'm going to turn on my shadows here with an area light with an area shadow, right? Now we're starting to get sort of the, the one of the foundations of that noisy look, right? So the scale is too high. I think so let's get that down to maybe yeah, eight or ten percent, something like that. Whatever looks right, and you also want to keep the final output size in mind. Um, this noise scale looks good um, at this size. If we made this smaller, it might disappear. So that's that's something to keep in mind. And what I'm also going to do is change the clipping a little bit. I want a little bit less noise than that. So I'm going to push the low clip higher, right? And that's just going to give us more space in between everything, right? So now we've got this this noisy pattern being applied uh, at the light level. So now we can not even have to worry about it and uh, in our each of our different materials. And that allows things to sort of stay even without having to go in and tweak lots of settings. So the other thing I'm going to do is create a, a simple material, turn on the luminance channel. And since this is our white material, I'm just going to leave this pretty much white, but I'm going to turn the brightness down to about also say 80, 75 or 80. We're going to tweak these settings a little bit exactly the look we want. I'm also going to turn the brightness on this color down a little bit, which is really like our diffuse channel. I'm going to group these just so I can quickly apply material to the whole thing. And you'll see that we have a little bit of, of shadowing and fall off in the color. Um, and in Luna's channel, that's really pushed an even, consistent, sort of flat looking color across all these materials, right? And I'm going to turn on, just so we get a little bit more of those contact shadows, I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion. 
And ambient occlusion is really only the extra thing we're going to add to our render settings. Everything else is going to be really basic. What we are going to do inside of ambient occlusion, though, is, is get you know, kind of, a, kind of a, a much lighter color here. And then we're going to really push it up. And this is going to help with that sketch and 2D kind of look as well, because we're going to have these, these exaggerated sort of contact shadows. Uh, but what I'm also going to do is to get some noise and grain in there, is just turn the accuracy down. So I'm going to divide that by 2. Minimum samples, let's say 4. Maximum samples, let's say like 16. And we'll turn the contrast up like, say, 10%. And now we're getting a noisy quality just based on the you know, the lack of information in these shadow channels. So uh, so that's kind of cool. I think we've got too much of that color. So I'm going to leave... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust these settings, let's say. So I'm going to go just a little bit darker on this, on this bottom knot here, or crayon, as they call it. And I'm going to go lighter on this central one, right? And you can see this is a lot like sort of a, a cell shading effect you might use. Where you really are controlling the shading um, just in this ambient occlusion channel. I'm going to go even lighter still on that. And a little less saturated. Right? Now we're starting to get this really kind of beautiful, noisy, very graphic effect on these. Now I think um, the highlights are maybe a little bit too much. For what I want. So what we can do is get in the reflectance channel here and turn that down as well. And that should sort of even things out a little bit. And then another thing we can do, and this is really just going to be, since we don't have GI on, this is really just going to be for the background color. I'm going to add a sky object. And we're going to make a luminant material to add to that sky. Make it sort of a light gray color. Cool. Now we're really, you know, you can see how quickly we've developed this really sort of flat graphic style, which I dig. I think the, the lighting is maybe a little too head on. So I'm going to turn that off to the side. Give us a little bit more of an interesting angle on those highlights. Making that a little better. Cool. And let's, let's get a little bit of color into the scene. I'm just going to add some nice sort of saturated colors. And you want to make sure that you have the same color in your luminance and your color channel. Right? And I can, you can do that quickly just by sort of dragging things over. Cool. We may even want to turn this light down just a touch. That's going to give us even more of a graphic style. And you can even pull down on the highlight, on the reflection a little bit, the color a little bit. Maybe add just a little bit of a darker um, bottom point to, those sh to that shadow gradient. This is maybe where you want to experiment a little and go like really dark. And so there's a lot of fun you can have just sort of playing around in here, getting these different looks. Let's also add in this sort of torus shape we had before. And you can see there it is without, um, this is just a totally basic uh, material. It's sort of the, the default texture, so to speak. And it, it, uh, it also looks really neat. It also collects that noisy um, cast shadow from the light, um, but it, it also takes on more of a cast shadow from um, from other objects around it because it doesn't have that luminance channel on it. So kind of neat. There's a lot of little tweaks and, and things you could experiment with to alter the look here. especially as you start adding in more saturated, bright colors, it really starts to take on a very cool, cartoony sort of look. Maybe we'll go 
a contrasting sort of blue color. Cool. And you see how quickly it renders as well. So that was um, a rather short episode. Normally I go on and on, but I thought it, um, given the schedule today and sort of wanting to try something new, I decided to do a, a quick tip. So let me know if you think of this format. Let me know if you find this uh, rendering technique helpful. I think it's a, it's a neat little look and you could probably apply it to a lot of different things. So I'd love to see it if you use it in a project of yours. Um, either, you know, reach out to me at my website. You see that there's a contact information um, section, steward at diligence.studio, um, or drop a comment below. Or feel free to hit me up on, on any of the social medias, which are at D-L-G-N-C-E, especially on Instagram, where I'm most active. Um, like I mentioned, the website is diligence.studio. Would appreciate it if you hit uh, that subscribe and like button. And if you want to figure out how to support the show and make a little donation, there's a, a link in the description. Um, appreciate you all. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And this is Stuart saying, see you till next week. Goodbye.